We're going to talk about fractions and percents. So really this is the same thing. Percents are just fractions with the same denominator, 100. Okay? So percents are just fractions written with the same denominator, 100. Okay? But before we talk about per uh, fractions or percents, let's talk about fractions. The best way to talk about fractions is with pizza. Okay? So, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, so if there are four total pieces and I pick one of those, then what fraction of the pizza is shaded? One fourth. So, yes, so the top number is one out of four total pieces. Okay, so one out of four. So this little fraction bar, you can think of as the, the two words out of, okay? So if I had three of those shaded, that would be three out of the four shaded, okay? All right, so that's one whole or in percentage, we say 100%. Percent is just out of 100. So if there were 100 pieces of that pizza and you ate the whole pizza, you ate 100 out of 100 pieces. Can you start calling the pizza the thing? Cause you're making me really hungry. I know, sorry. I, 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 I should, shouldn't use pizza. But it's right after lunch, so it's okay. If this was third period, this would be terrible. That'd be horrible. Yeah. That'd be torture. <laughs> okay, so we call the top number a numerator or numberator. So that's the number out of the total denominator. Okay, so the, 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 the numerator is basically how many you're counting, how many you are counting. And then the denominator is total number of parts. Okay? Total number of parts. All right. And when it comes to percents, per cent, what does per mean? Per means a little slash like that. Like when you say $2 per apple. You say two dollars slash apple or th something like, or miles per hour, things like that. And then cent, what is cent? Where do you see the word cent in life? Money, how many cents are in a dollar? 100, so a cent is literally a hundredth. So per hundredth. Literally a hundredth. That's what cent means, literally. Okay, so a lot of people do this trick. So you take 100, you take this guy and you make a slanty thing. You take this guy and put the zero there and then put this other zero there. So see how it's um, like that. Well, that's, that's clever, whatever. I think, I don't know if that's where it came from or not, but really you see how it's a fraction? It's this many out of a hundred, okay? So percents are just fractions, but they're very stubborn fractions because they won't have any other denominator except a hundred. So it, you kind of have to cut your piece or whatever it is you're dealing with into 100 parts. So one out of four is the same thing as 25 out of 100, okay? It's still one fourth of a, one fourth of 100, right? It's 25, so 25 per cent. Um, but you guys probably know the big ones, like one fourth, one quarter is another name for one fourth. How much is a quarter money? 25 cents, right? So how much, is, how much, what percent is half? Hunter? 50, right, that makes sense. 50 is half of 100. So what's three fourths or three quarters? 
Yeah. 75. 75 cents or 75%. So you probably know most of the percents because of money really helps. But when I say one third, what percent is one third? This is a tougher one. Hunter, do you know? 33. Close, very close. 33 and one third. 33 and one third percent. So 33, if you multiply that by three, you get 99. So it's not quite 100. But 33 and a third percent is, is the percentage for a third. So that's a weird one. The thirds and sixths and stuff like that are weird ones. Anyone know what a sixth is? What's a sixth? Anyone know that? 16. 16. Oh, so that's two thirds, 66 and two thirds percent. That's two thirds. But six, uh, one sixth is 16 and two thirds percent, which is kind of a weird one. Okay. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's do some other things. So these are fractions, uh, a mixed number basically is mixed. It has a whole number and it has a fraction, whole number plus a fraction. So it's, it's kind of like an addition problem. So you would say the whole number and then you would say and, and that's the only time you can say and, right? When you get to the end of a whole number, you can say and. So like three and one half, that's okay to say. All right? And you can even say mm, three and one half. That's fine. Okay? So if I wanted to say the number of pizzas, that are shaded here. I'm sorry, yeah. the number of Big clocks. Um, mud pies. No, mud pies, those are good. You like said actual pie. mud. <laughs> mud splatters. <laughs> so how, how much mud splatters is this? Okay, Hunter knows anyone else? Do you know? What is it? Two and three-fourths. Two and three-fourths. So this is two and, and this looks like, we just guessed, but it looks like three-fourths or three-quarters of the circle. So three-fourths. So we would say two and three-fourths. So once you get to the end of a number, you can say this. If you get to the fraction part, that's the only time you can say and. Or if you get to a decimal, you can say and, okay? Two and three-fourths, good. So anyone know what percent this is? Wait, which one? Well, what percent is this? 100%. And what's that? 100%. What's that? Another 100%. So what do we have so far? 200. 200. And what's the, what percent 75. is this? 75. So total is 275%. Okay? So remember when you have whole numbers, every whole number is 100%. So if this was 2,000 and three-fourths, that would be, let's see, 2,000, so times 100, so that would be 200,000%, 200,075%. That's a lot. It's crazy. Okay? How are we doing so far? Is this making sense? Okay. So uh, one more thing to mention. Uh, oh, and... By the way, two and three fourths, if I were to do this on a number line, it kind of depends on the number line. So if this is two and this is three, and then we've got our negatives here, but we're not dealing with those in this problem. But you would kind of have to have these little marks in between. So if I had separated in between each whole number was four marks, then this would work nicely. So where would two and three fourths be located on this number line? Yes, Hunter. Uh, it'd be two, like obviously, and then go, you gotta go over three. Yeah, so basically, if you go over four, one, two, three, four, you're at three. But you don't want to go four, you want to go three out of the four, right? Because three fourths. So you go to that third one. So two and three fourths is right there. Good. Well, where do we see this in life? Where do we see a number line kind of like that? Well, Grace? Um, you would see it. I don't 
<laughs> Where do you guys see it? You probably have one in your bag. Yes. Oh, Where, a ruler. A ruler, that's right. Okay. So, if I have a ruler here, let's say this is one, this is two. Well, what's in between all this stuff? Well, what's halfway in between? One and a half. So this would be half. So here's one and a half, right? Okay, but then a cool thing about the ruler is they have longer lines. So the longest line are the whole numbers. And then the second longest is gonna be half right there. So there's a half of an inch. Okay, well, what's, what's right here? What's that? What's that mark right there? Um, one fourth. One fourth, okay. And then it keep, it, most rulers go at least one more. What's that one? Um, one eighth. One eighth, okay. So it's kind of hard to think about, but a half, how many eighths is one half? Four. What out of eight is half? Uh, four. four, so if this is four eighths, one more would be? Five eighths, okay? So if this is, if we're talking about quarters, if this is two quarters, right, two fourths, one more quarter would be three, is he talking about the Pythagorean theorem? He's talking about the Pythagorean theorem. Yes! Pythagoras! Yeah, that too. Okay, so let's see how a ruler kind of helps you if this ruler had all the lines the same length, that would be confusing, wouldn't it? It'd be hard to read. Um, but these different lengths help you see the fourths and the halves and the eighths and the things like that. Some rulers or some tape measures especially have one more, what's that called? Sixteenth. That's a sixteenth, okay? So, um, but you, if you just know up to the eighths, you'll probably be fine. You just need to know how to read a ruler. So if I, if I um, gave you a measurement and it ended up about right here, what is that? If I, if I drew a line that ended up to right here, how long is this ray? Or how long is that line segment? Do you, can you read it? What is it? One and one eleven? No. So... So do you see how the different marks are here? So um, let me draw the ruler completely because that's probably confusing you. Okay, so if, this is where I want to measure to. What is that measurement? Yes, Grace. Um, one and one eighth. So you've got the eighth part. Oh, right? no, no. Oh, wait. One and seven eighths. One and seven eighths. So really what you were doing is like two minus one eighth. Yeah. Which is one and seven eighths. So that's one. You've passed the one whole mark. And then you went to seven out of the eight total little marks. So this is one and seven eighths. You see how that's seven eighths right there? Do you guys see that? But you're past the one, so it's gotta be one and seven eighths. Okay, good. Hunter? I thought you meant like on a real ruler. Oh, well yeah, this is kind of like a real ruler, just a real chubby one. It's an obtuse ruler. Yeah. Okay. It's supposed to be a little like yeah. So have you guys read a ruler? Do you guys know how to read a ruler and yeah. a tape measure? Yeah. Okay. And if you don't, uh, we can chat more about it next time. But um, try a few of these problems and then see, see, if, uh, see if it works for you. Black man.